Good day and welcome back to the next episode on the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Uh, today we are looking at dual axis charts, so we're taking a break from the custom chart series. Nonetheless, we're happy to have you here and we are sure you will um, enjoy this as well. So, as I mentioned, we're looking at dual axis charts. So, the dual axis charts um, are basically charts that combine related data into a single view to perform additional comparisons and drive some insights. And this is an example of one um, where you can see the average price per square foot being depicted as a bar chart. And overlaid on top of that is a line chart of the average estimated rent per square foot. So it's easy then to determine the, the trends and the relationships between these two um, variables. All right, this is just an example. Um, we will be looking at a different example. So if we just look at the data we'll be using today, and as always, this data is available on the Super Data Science website, um, and you can find the link in the comments section. All right, so it's an Excel file. It's the Amazing Mod EU file, um, and you will see we've got three different tabs. In the first one is the list of orders. So this is a summarized version of the ordered header where we've got the order ID, the order date, customer date, you know, name, um, the city, country, region, and segment it's in, as well as the shipping date, shipping mode, and the state. We also have the order breakdown information, which, which provides the uh, detailed lines to the list of orders. And for this, we have again the order ID, which it links to, the product name, discount provided in a percentage format, the sales and profit monetary values, the quantity, category of that specific item or product as well as the subcategory and lastly we also have a sales target field which we just have the actual month as well as the region and the target set for for that specific region and month and without further ado let's jump into tableau to create the um, actual chart so we'll be connecting to an excel file and as we mentioned this amazing mart eu file all right, and there are our three sheets. Uh, let's drag in the list of orders as well as the order breakdown information. Um, it's completing a inner join over here and we can see all of the information is, is pulling through. All right, um, let's jump into the first sheet. Now, we'll be creating three different ones um, just to show the power or the, and the usage of all of these, um, of, of the dual axes in different kind of charts. So the first one we'll do, we'll start off creating the sales versus profit um, and in that we'll start off with a using the the date but not the the year but the actual month of the of the order as well as then the sales which we can just put into rows and in addition to that the profit as we had said so here we can see here you can go you can see we've got all of the um, sales at the top and profit at the bottom um, but we mentioned we want to overlay them on top of each other. So um, to do that, you just go to the, in, the, in the row shelf, you can go to one of the measures, right click on the drop down and select the dual axis. Now you can see it's obviously overlaid on top of each other and this gives us some idea, but we can tidy this up and make this look a little, a little bit better. Um, I prefer to then change the sales to, um, bar, to a bar chart, for instance, and let's immediately change the color. Uh, Make it look easier on the eye for us especially so sales blue and profit yellow and there we go there you can see that we now basically have each month's sales as a bar chart and then also the profit over for each of these months as well so you can see in certain months the sales was quite high but the profit low so we are potentially giving away um, too much discount but other months we actually made a better profit than what the um, order value was. So this gives you a good uh, good breakdown to see what exactly um, yeah, the, the comparisons or you can compare basically these two metrics to each other. The next one we'll be creating is sales versus target. So now we'll be starting to use the target information. So for that, what we'll be doing is um, we have to go back to the data source and just create a new data source. Um, and we'll go back to Excel. We haven't incorporated this one yet, so let's just go into that and select the sales target. So as we mentioned, you've got the sales target um, with the month, the region, and then the target at the end of the day. Right, back to our sheet. What we'll do now is firstly to check the, um, the relationship. So we go to data, edit relationships to make sure that um, these two data sources are speaking properly to each other. We are using a data blend and that's the reason why. We will not be using a straightforward join. 
um, seeing as the data, the, the sales data, sales target data is at a different level of granularity to the actual orders. So you, there's other ways to do it as well. I prefer this one. But um, yeah, to, to edit the relationship, we have to look at uh, what has been joined already automatically by Tableau. And you'll see its region, which is um, partly correct, as we won't be using only the region. But if you remember, we'll also be using the month as well as the um, year of that specific month. So to do that, we just change this to custom and we can literally just add in more. So we'll go to order date and say we're linking the month to the month of the target. And we'll do the same with the year because we can't only use month. It would then also join it incorrectly to other years or months from other years. So let's just make sure we use year and we'll use year on the target as well. All right, and now you should, well, once we start adding information in here, let's just see whether that has actually saved properly. Yeah, there we go. So what we could do now is we can start in adding information. So initially we'll add in the order data to the column. So again, we wanna look at this from a um, month by month basis. So we'll put down as a month. We'll also be adding in the sales information as mentioned e e earlier as well. But now we want to put in the target information and overlay them on top of each other. And that's, that's where we go into the secondary um, data source target and just make sure that these are linked up properly so that all of these links are clicked. So we're using month and we're using region and obviously year as well with inside on that order date or well, the target date of these orders. And um, yeah, we've got now that measure target that we can literally just drag into our visualization and there we, there we go. So you can see now our targets was only for the year of 2016. So it would be a good idea to go back and just add in a filter because we would only want to be comparing the year, as 20, the year of 2016. So that's as straightforward as changing that to 16. And that's already set at 31st of December. We can hit apply and okay. Right, so that gives us a more narrow and broken down uh, view. The next thing we need to do is also just to put this on a dual axis. So remember the drop down and select the dual axis. And now we can start comparing it a bit easier. However, what I would um, say would look a bit better over here is to take the sales again, put that as a bar chart as well as put down the um, target, not as a line, but as an area chart. Immediately you can see it doesn't look that great. Um, there's a couple of things we still need to do. We also need to add in the region to show it properly per region from central, north and south. And let's just move this around a little bit. Um, let's fix up the colors and also use the region for the actual colors. Hold on one second. We only, we only want to do the color on the sales part to give individual colors. And for the target, we actually just want to remove all coloring we've got there. And we can see that the bar chart is actually showing behind the, um, the area chart. So in other words, sales figures are behind the target. I think it looks easier on the eye if sales are put, be, uh, put in front of the target. So we can just swap it around like that and we've got our region. So you'll notice that um, in this case, it almost seems like we are missing our target most of the time, which is not the case because in this month specifically, our sales was 60,000 and our target was 30. So we're expecting that bar to be much higher. Now, the reason for that is that our sales is running from zero to 60 on the axis and for the target it's running from zero to 30. So we need to make sure that we synchronize the axis to get them to look a bit better and accurate actually, not only better. Um, and there we are, there we go. It looks way better. Uh, let's also just change the size a little bit um, just to make it look even more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, there we go. So we can see them month by month there we go, yeah, that looks good. Um, month by month, what the target was, what the actual sales was, and how it compares to, to the target. So we can also just um, hide this and just go show header and it will disappear. And also remember that if we edit this axis, that we actually just take out the, um, the title, because I mean, it's not only showing target, it's obviously showing target versus sales. All right, and we can just change that uh, axis title as well to month. There we go. And that is our second chart, sales versus target. Next, we'll work with some geographic data. So we'll create a new sheet. We'll go back to our original data set. And we will start off by using the country. 
which will drag into our visualization. Immediately, it would obviously put a map down. And we want to see this sales. So maybe let's just change the title here because we know what we're working with. We want to see sales versus profit, but in a geo uh, geographical uh, manner. There we go. All right, so immediately it puts down uh, these blocks, but we actually want to see a filled map. Um, sorry, not block circles. <laughs> um, we want to see a filled map, and we don't want to use the sum of sales as the size, but actually as the color. Let's just change the color as well, because uh, green is the color of money. So we can literally just select the number of green, so where uh, the color green, to so where the darker the green, the bigger the sum of sales has been for that specific country. But as we said, we want to show the profit as well. So um, to do that, the easiest way would be is just to duplicate our chart by moving the latitude next to itself. And now you notice there are two different charts and options for charts. Let's take the, the second one and put down or replace rather the sum of sales with sum of profit because we obviously want to see the profit for, for this specific um, on, on top of this because we're going to combine these now into a dual axis chart. Um, this shouldn't be a filled map. Uh, let's try to use circles. I think also if we use the sum of profit as our size of circle, it would show it a bit easier or a bit better. Um, so holding down the control button, we'll just drag it into, into size over there. And let's just fix up the color as well and make it a green, uh, sorry, a blue red, um, a nice blue red. Let's just see where that is. It's always a, a way to go looking for it. Uh, blue red, there we go. Okay, so in essence, we are saying that blue means higher profit and red means low profit in, the, in essence a loss if it is gone below the zero value all right to combine this and put them on top of each other we go to the drop down again and select dual axis and voila i think if we actually just change the size a bit bigger then it's easier to see and there we are so we can see where some countries have actually made a profit um, yeah, where they've got low sales but other countries also had low sales but actually made a loss in, with, in terms of the red. Alright so those are three examples, three good examples in my opinion that one can use dual access charts for. Um, I'm happy to hear your comments on, on this tutorial as well as further suggestions perhaps and, and comments so feel free to drop us a comment. Um, more importantly do not forget to subscribe to the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Um, to get more of these and exciting um, other uh, videos. Once again, thank you for joining and until we meet again.